La Liga is finally back, and Barcelona open up the final stretch of the season on the road against Mallorca. They may be fighting relegation, but there are plenty of questions for both these teams heading into the weekend. I wouldn't normally preview a La Liga match like this, but I have a feeling that this match will be remembered more so for what happens off the field than anything that happens on it. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton. This is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube exclusive. From the Barca perspective, the questions are pretty straightforward. Is Lionel Messi actually fully healthy and will he be able to go the full 90? All indications are yes to both those questions. Luis Suarez, meanwhile, is back from a pretty major surgery and 150 days on the mend. Yet we know how things work with Suarez. If he's healthy, he starts. Antoine Griezmann will most likely partner them in front of Sergio Busquets, Frankie de Jong, and throw a dart against a wall to figure out if it'll be Artur, Artur Vidal, or even Rakitic. Same for the right back spot with Sergio Roberto and Nelson Semedo. Gerard Piquet will partner Sam Umtiti, who will start in place of the suspended Clement Lenglet. Jordi Alba will be on the left, and Mark andre Ter Stegen in goal. Now that I say it out loud, it sounds pretty straightforward. Barcelona are the more talented team and should come out with the three points, but there is a chance that Vicente Moreno has a surprise or two for the Giants. For any fears about Camp No not having the same effect on opponents, Mallorca must be feeling that tenfold. The San Moy Stadium has been the only reason why Mallorca isn't already relegated. They have just five points on the road this season, the worst mark of any team in the first division but they have captured 20 points at home. Losing what makes their home stadium special could make this an ugly one for the hosts. Mallorca fans have a knack for being heard, and opponents say they have a creative way of getting into your head. Unlike Espanyol, who may have dropped too many points to get out of the cellar, Mallorca still has a path out of the relegation zone. Leganes, who sits second to last, lost Martin Braithwaite and will have a tough time staying up too. Heading into the match day, Celta de Vigo sit one point in front of Mallorca, and Abar are nowhere near safe, just two points ahead of Mallorca. Let's talk about how Los Bomayones could line up. Against the La Liga Giants this season, they have generally played in a 4-2-3-1, which includes their first match against Barca this season, which Barcelona won 5-2. This formation leaves leading goalscorer Ante Budimir isolated up top. As much as he was denied service in their meeting in December, he collected two of his nine goals on the season in that affair. He is limited in his ability to turn and run onto a ball, but his hold-up play and ability to use his height around the box are what make him a threat, regardless of how many touches he gets. Prior to the break, in a 2-1 win over Abar, Vicente Moreno went with a 3-5-2 formation, with Takafusa Kubo sitting underneath the pairing of Budimir and the on-loan Colombian forward Cucho Hernandez, who has struggled with injuries for much of this campaign. Kubo has taken his time this season, as any teenager should, to get acquainted with a starting spot but the recently turned 19-year-old seems to get more comfortable in the Liga with every passing match. Other teams around the division may overlook him, but due to his history with Barcelona and move to Real Madrid, he won't be taking any culés by surprise. He has three goals and three assists on the year, and probably about half of the team's notable highlights, due largely to his superior skills on the ball. The foil of Kubo for Mallorca is 32-year-old Danny Rodriguez, whose whole game is about filling in the gaps and doing a job. Rodriguez has spent much of his career outside of the first division for teams like Racing for Roll, Racing Santander, and Albacete. Yet, he fits in the first division as the heartbeat of this Mallorca side. He can create a bit, works hard defensively, and serves as the spirit of the team. His five goals are second behind Budimir's, along with his three assists. His versatility has been a valuable tool for his manager, who has used him as an attacking midfielder behind the strikers, central midfielder, in a double pivot, and on both wings. When Moreno plays him, we'll tell you a bit about Mallorca's game plan. The Balearic Island Club was always going to be fighting an uphill battle this season, with the smallest budget in all of the Liga, a 30 million euro spending limit. For context, Barca's spending limit is 671 million euros, followed by Real Madrid at 641, Atletico at 349, and Sevilla at 185. All that said, Mallorca did at least attempt to reinforce in the winter. They brought in right winger Alejandro Pozo from Sevilla on loan, defensive midfielder from Newcastle Sung Hyun Ki as a free transfer, and left back Leonardo Kutris from Olympiacos on loan, who promptly got injured and is out for the season. Not really the cavalry. Other important players to note are winger Lago Jr., who is probably the most important attacker Mallorca has, even if it doesn't show up in the stat sheet. He had the winning goal against Madrid earlier in the season, so he's okay in my book. Defensive midfielder Idris Baba is a player I really like for them, but his second half of the season was worse than his first half. 36-year-old Salva Sevilla probably benefited from the break at this point in the season. 
and he is relied on to snuff out issues and remind players that La Liga isn't just about fancy footwork. And speaking of fancy footwork, Alas Febas was swallowed up by Barca's midfield in their first encounter, but I am mentioning him because he has some creativity, and it's interesting to note that he was born in Catalonia, but came up in Madrid's system. As much as I have spent time profiling the outfield players, don't be surprised if Mallorca's best chance to get points in the match comes due to the gloves of 35-year-old Manola Reina. While Fabri was brought on loan from Fulham, he has been the backup to the elder Reina, who some fans might remember from his Levante days 10 years ago, the last time he was in the Liga, before spending the next 9 years bouncing around the lower divisions of Spain, plus Greece and Cyprus. Barca are the heavy favorites, but the pressure is on the table leaders to deliver right out of the gate. Bayern Munich may have had a few points already over Dortmund at the restart, and they also won their recent meeting. But the German champions have set the standard for how to hit the ground running. I'm so excited that La Liga is back, and Frances and I will be breaking it all down at the Barcelona Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This is the first YouTube exclusive since we hit 1,000 subscribers, so I just want to say thank you so much for the support. And if you aren't subscribed, give us a like, hit that subscription button, and the bell for notifications. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca.